There are so many videos on how to create your own protective face mask to prevent infection. However, there are really important issues that you need to consider before you create your own face mask, and we're getting into that right now in this video. Hi, and welcome to Problem Solver. Today, we're going to talk about not only how to create an effective face mask at home, but also some important considerations you might want to think about before you create that mask. But before we begin, I do want to talk about a myth where some people think that having some protection on your face is better than no protection at all. But that's not necessarily true. Consider the fact that if you wear a mask or some kind of protection that is not properly fitted or is made of ineffective material, it might create a false sense of security or a false sense of confidence uh, that will lead you to become lax in your sanitary behavior. Well, in this video, we're also going to talk about a few things. First, we're going to talk about the benefits and the dangers of wearing face masks. We're going to talk about the most effective material to use when you're creating that mask. A third, we're going to talk about the proper fitment of that mask. And then next, we're going to talk about good mask wearing techniques, behaviors, and habits. But stay to the end of the video where I'm going to talk to you about how to create a very simple and effective face mask at home. So, what are the benefits of wearing a face mask? Well, first of all, it's a visual reminder to others to keep their distance and also make others aware that there is a potential infectious situation if they were not aware of that in the first place. Next, it shows that you're concerned about others because remember, the primary beneficiary of a face mask is not to the wearer but to the public at large. Next, it also gives the wearer comfort and reassurance in stressful times. Let's next talk about material. What's the best material to use for an effective face mask you create at home? Well, in a professional setting, for example a surgeon's mask, that will filter about 62 to 65 percent of particles whereas an N95 mask will filter 95% of those particles. So our goal is to find a material that can achieve or mimic professional quality filtration as best as possible. By coincidence, there have been recent and numerous studies that have asked that very question. Research has gone into what are the best materials to use for inclusion in a homemade mask for proper filtration. And I will include links below for those studies so you can see for yourself. But to sum up, pretty much researchers have determined overall that woven fabrics were more effective than knitted ones. Um, the reason being is that knitted fabrics seem to have more spacing between each knit and therefore provided less efficient filtration. Out of the woven fabrics, the best woven fabric that was most effective at filtration was quilter's cotton, as long as it was 180 thread count or higher. Uh, next effective cloth was batik. Um, the researchers have also determined that with lesser quality fabrics, um, they can become increased in terms of their effectiveness if you used or had an internal layer of flannel, for example. Another way to increase the quality of filtration for lesser quality fabrics was to uh, increase the number of layers of said fabric, and that would increase filtration, and that makes sense. One recent study that has been making the rounds in the news lately has been the use of shop towels. Um, it seems that shop towels were very effective in providing really good filtration. Um, the study that, they've, that I'm going to cite that you can see below has determined that out of all the shop towels, it seems that Scott shop towels were the best. I'm not endorsing them in any way, but that's what the study found. Um, luckily, you can find shop towels such as Scott at your local auto parts store since that's where those things are used. One quick and easy way to determine whether one fabric is more effective at filtration than in another fabric is to hold the fabric up to a light source. And the fabric that we where you can more easily see the light is going to be the fabric that is less effective at filtration. So are there any materials or fabrics that you might want to either avoid or use as a last resort? Well, according to studies, pathogens seem to last the longest on synthetic and polyester fibers, um, as well as spandex being the one that's the worst offender. So I suggest not using those fabrics if 
you can avoid them. What about other items such as t-shirts, bandanas, and scarves? Uh, you've seen that used a lot, I'm sure. And the CDC actually came out with an advisal saying that bandanas can be used for facial covering for face masks as a last resort. However, even in their advisal, which I'll include in the link below, uh, they say that that's not personal protective equipment or PPE. And there have been medical professionals that have even advised against the CDC recommendation. So I would avoid the bandanas if you can have a proper face mask or a face mask using materials we previously discussed. The next topic is fitment or proper mask fitting procedures. What you want to do first and foremost is to make sure the nose and the mouth are completely covered and make sure that the mask completely conforms to the curves of your face with no gaps between the mask and the face. The most common places where you see gaps are in the bridge of the nose and the cheeks as well as the jawbone area. Now masks that have tie backs as opposed to the elastic loops can provide a more custom fit and therefore are more recommended than the elastic ones. Let's talk next about good mask wearing behavior and habits. Now the first best advice in terms of behavior is to stay at home during an epidemic or highly infectious season. But short of that, if you have to go out, practice safe social distancing and good hygiene, such as hand washing right after contact or when you get home. In terms of specifically mask wearing behavior, what you want to do is you want to, according to the WHO or the World Health Organization, take off your mask only by the straps so you don't contaminate yourself when you, you dispose of them or launder them. That being said, in terms of disposable masks, use them one time, then dispose them. Do not reuse them again. If you're using a reusable mask, of course, you do not want to use them again until you have laundered them. They should go straight into the laundry right after you use them and not to be worn again until after it's laundered. You also want to consider using eye protection such as glasses or sunglasses or something because the eyes are also a very common source of infection. That's where um, contagions and pathogens can easily infect a body through the eyes because that's considered a mucous membrane as well. Similarly, contact contamination with the hands is very common. so. Proper use and frequent use of gloves are recommended and be sure to make sure you know how to properly take off and take and put on the gloves as well. The last thing you should do in terms of masks is to make sure you keep them dry because any kind of moisture will promote contamination or infection. Here are some things you should not do when wearing a mask. First of all, don't touch the front of your mask. Uh, that increases the contamination of the mask if your hands are already contaminated. Second, you should uh, not constantly readjust or touch or move around your mask. This also increases chances of contamination. You also don't want to keep any part of your nose or mouth out. People seem to want to either move it temporarily uh, because they couldn't be heard or understood or maybe they wanted to uh, sneeze or cough, which is horrible, or they want to eat something so they move their mask temporarily. Do not move your mask or remove it until you are completely done from removing yourself from the uh, area. Now here's how to make a very simple yet effective face mask at home using nothing but common household items. This is a technique you've probably seen all over the internet, including YouTube. In fact, the U.S. Surgeon General himself uh, recommends this technique and I'll put a link below as to the technique he used. All you need are three items. First, you need a couple hair ties, the same type of ties that the ladies use to wear ponytails. Some people in this project use uh, rubber bands. However, I do not recommend that because it's pretty abrasive and it kind of wears on you after a whole days of wear. You also need, again, the shop towels we talked about earlier. I cut down the segment to half the size because that's the size that will fit in my mask. You will also need a cloth. Again, I would recommend the cloths we mentioned. In this case, this happens to be a cotton cloth woven made from a sheet set of 200 uh, thread count. 
Now the size also is dependent on you, but typically what fits most people is a handkerchief size or about the pillowcase, a standard pillowcase size. What you want to do is fold the sheet into thirds. So the first third you fold up, you put the shop towel there, you fold over, then you take your hair ties, you put one on the end, go all the way up until you reach where the shop towel is, same thing with the other side. Then you fold both ends over and then tuck one end into the other. Make some slight adjustments so that you have your hair ties out as your, as your holder and you bring it over. To ensure proper fitment, of course, you want to do this in front of a mirror and you might need to adjust, depending on your sizing, the folding or the size of the cloth. The other, there are many other ways to actually create masks. I'm going to link down below in the description one that's recommended by Kaiser Permanente. It's a very good mask, it's a little bit more involved, uh, but you can do a YouTube or Google search and you'll find tons of techniques. Again, recommend that you take into consideration the material as well as how you wear it. Now, if you have any other type of techniques to make a homemade mask that you would suggest or recommend, or some type of material that you prefer or stories you have, I would love to hear them in the comment section below. And if this helped you out and was very informative, please give this video a thumbs up and even subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching and be safe out there.